Greetings, Linda. My name is Paul Mays. I am a Christian. Welcome to the page. I'm a Christian, just a Christian. I was added by Jesus to the one church that he promised to build. In Matthew 16, 18, he said, uh, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's the church that I was added to. That's the church that I'm part of, the one he promised to build and that he promised would always stand. That's how I'm starting off in response to your comment. I read the first line, couple of lines and I said, oh, I'm just gonna hit record and just do it this way. This is what I do. My name's Paul and I'm a Christian, not a Protestant, not a Catholic, not a Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Calvin, none of that. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch, Acts 11, 26, and there is no other name, Acts 4, 12. So that's what I am. So we're going to talk about that, how to be that church rather than being a denomination. So you made a claim against us, and I'll just go ahead and start reading. Your church began less than 10 years ago. His church began 2,000 years ago. It's not ours. It's his. And we are that church by abiding in his word, abiding in his doctrine. Jesus said, John 8, 31 and 32, uh, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If... You abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Now that's as opposed to abiding in man-made doctrines, in man-made manuals and creed books. You see, the Bible completely equips us. And that's the one church that I'm part of. I'm going to have to plug in my phone. Also, 2 John 1, nine says, He that abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. But he that abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father of Son, Father and the Son. So we're going to start with the understanding that Jesus built his church as he promised and that it always will stand. It always has stood. It always will stand. So Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Jesus having all authority said that. He meant it. It's true. Okay. He built it and it is still here. Now, what denomination was that? There were no denominations when he made that promise or when he built that church. So since that church is literally pre-denominational and literally still here, I want to be part of that church. I don't want to be part of some man-made church teaching man-made doctrine and, in this case, offering man-made unauthorized worship. All right. So I'm a part of Jesus's church, not a denomination. I'm instead part of Jesus's church, which is not a denomination. She's not Catholic. She's not Protestant. She's not man-made, and she doesn't get her doctrines from man. We have a book, chapter, verse, support, reason for everything we do and teach. Everything. Okay, let me read the rest of that. Seems to me you enjoy sowing discord among other Christians that do not believe as you do. Okay, so here's where discord comes. Watch, watch. Do this. Yes, Jesus. Guess what? We're together with Jesus at that point. So Jesus said, sing, teach, admonish. Whatever you do must be by the authority of Jesus Christ. That's from Colossians 3, 16 and 17. So he said to do that. If we do that, guess what? We're not sowing discord. We're not divided from Christ. We're with Christ. Now, if you're with us by being with him, then we're good. We're united as we're commanded to be. 1 Corinthians 1, 10 1 Corinthians 1.10, Now I beseech you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you all be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Now I'm going to show who actually causes the discord. You ready? Sing. Yes, Jesus, we sing. Guess what? We're together. Guess what y'all say? Mm -mm. We're going to do what we want. Ah, guess what you've done? You've divided from Christ. You have sowed the discord. Those who... Brace yourself. Those who obey God are not guilty of sowing discord. We are commanded to expose the unfruitful works of darkness. Vain worship is unfruitful works of darkness. That's Ephesians 5.11. Okay? That's what that is. We're exposing it as commanded. We're not causing discord. By doing so, we're obeying Jesus, just like we obey Jesus when we sing as commanded. Those who reject his command for singing by bringing in the instrument cause the division. The obedient do not. Those that reject the divine pattern for singing cause the division. The obedient, the ones who sing as commanded, do not cause the, the, the division. We do not sow discord. 
Okay. Uh, among Christ, other Christians who do not believe as you do, who do not believe and obey God. We don't want you to obey us. We don't want you to believe us. We don't want you to follow us. Instead, we want you to believe God, that God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, with a heart of submission according to the truth of the word. That's John 4, 23 and 24. Don't believe me. Test me. First John 1, 4. Don't believe what I'm telling you. Test me. Look up what I'm saying. I have no authority. I'm saying, look, I'm going to obey God. Y'all should too. If you love God enough to worship him, don't, doesn't it make sense to worship him the way he actually asked? You know what happens if you don't? He rejects it as vain. Why do you transgress the commandments of God, Matthew 15, 3, for your tradition? Literally what you're doing. It started in the 7th century. The Catholics are like, nah, I know he said to sing, but we're going to bring in the instrument. They rejected Jesus Christ when they did so. They divided, sowed discord when they did so. When the Protestants started doing it in the 1800s, sowed discord, denied Christ, caused division. Yeah, that's what's going on here. Matthew 15, 3. Why do you transgress the commandments of God for your tradition? You're just telling me what you think I want to hear, but your hearts are far from me. In vain you're worshiping me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Matthew 15, 3, 8, and 9. Uh, I don't believe God has given you the authority to judge others' forms of worship. Then why did you just violate your own principle and judge me? You see what you did there? Guess what judging isn't? Condemned. Guess what it is? Commanded. Guess what is condemned? Hypocritical judgment, Matthew 7. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment, John 7, 24. See, Matthew 7 does not con judge not lest you be judged. No, that doesn't condemn judging. It commands judging. Matthew 7 commands judging. Get the moat out of your own eye. Get the beam out of your own eye so you can see to get the moat, the speck, out of your brother's eye. Guess what getting the speck out of your brother's eye is? Judging. Yeah, you have to be able to judge to do that. Yes, judging is commanded. Now, you just violated your own principle, what you think God teaches about judging, by saying, oh, you're sowing discord. You just judged us. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you did, but it's not a righteous judgment because it's not according to the word. We're exposing the unfruitful works of darkness. We're exposing vain worship. Why do we do it? Because we love you. We do. If you love God enough to worship him, doesn't it make sense to give him what he asked for? Don't you want to know? All right, let's keep going. If you prefer your style of worship, I don't. I... It doesn't matter what I prefer. It doesn't matter what I prefer. I'm not doing what I prefer because I have no authority. I'm doing what God prefers because I, John 14, 15, love him, and Ecclesiastes 12, 13, reverently fear him, okay? It doesn't matter what I like. We worship God the way he likes because we are Christians. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Guess who's not? The ones who don't abide in his word. Those who don't follow Christ, obey Christ, they're not his disciples. They're not Christians, not Christ followers by definition. Literally every scripture that governs Christian worship specifies singing. Literally. None authorized playing. Not a single one. Yeah. We love you enough to show you this in the scriptures. We don't do what we like. We do what God likes. That's what Christians do. Um, go to a church you believe as you do. Um, we are the church. I don't go to a church. I assemble with the church. And I assemble with the church, the one pre-denominational church that belongs to Christ because I want to go to heaven. I want to give God the worship he asked for. I want to be his church rather than being part of a denomination which is against Christ. John 17, 20 through 23, 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13. Look it up. Test me. God is not pleased with people who try to divide the body of Christ. Correct. So stop. Stop correcting those and hypocritically judging those who are encouraging obedience to God. That's what we're doing. Why do we do it? Because we love God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, biblical truth, and you. That's why we're doing what we're doing. I know this is new information to you. 
You have, you have a choice to make, you know. You have no authority to offer the vain worship that you've been worshiping. You have a choice. Now that you know, you have a choice. You can eat, When you go to assemble next time, you're going to remember that, huh, God never asked me to do this. I'm sitting back and letting other people worship with machinery for me. Yeah, and you will have a choice to make at that point. You can keep worshiping with those man-made churches offering man-made worship that Jesus never asked for, or you can repent, change your mind, and say, hmm, I'm going to do what God said. That's what I would encourage you to do. My name is Paul Mays, and I am a Christian. No prefix, no suffix, no substitutions. Added by Jesus to his one church when I obeyed his one gospel. I love you. This is why I do what I do. I love you in a let's go to heaven together kind of way. Not in a, oh, you do what you feel is right. You, you go, let's just go along to get along. Uh, let's just agree to disagree. That's against Christ. Instead, I'm going to love you by saying, you should really obey God in this. Thank you for prayerfully considering this message.